Hey guys, Jeremy at Gilbrook Farm and today's shop video is just a quick Q&A. We asked you guys to send us some questions about workshop stuff, DIY, whatever. And you sent some cool questions, so we have some answers. Okay, first question comes from, well, heck, there's like four questions. Come from uh, Homesteading with the Cases. Nail gun, worth the cost? Absolutely 100% yes. Uh, if you're gonna do many building projects, if you're gonna build a deck, definitely worth a gun. Uh, if you're building chicken coops and goat houses and anything that you would n normally be pounding nails with, get a framing nail. Assuming you can make it work. I just rebuilt this one. Probably saw me do that in my how to fix a framing nailer video. Um, but yes, definitely will save you lots and lots of time uh, if you're building a structure. If you're building a deck, you can put it together in about a day. Um, I have three nail guns. This is the big one, the framing nailer. Use this to put together uh, two by fours, two by sixes, all the framing structure of a structure. I have a smaller DeWalt that is a finish nailer uh, that I use to put up crown molding, base molding, uh, smaller pieces of wood like that. Shoots smaller nails uh, so you don't split the wood. And I have a, a third one which is a very small brad nailer. Uh, it shoots staples and brad nails and I use this for uh, small work. Um, building a bookcase and you put in a quarter inch piece of plywood on the back for the backing just shoot brad nails in it. <laughs> Lightweight, easy to use. Nail guns are worth it. Chainsaw, what is my take on a chainsaw? Holy crap. Well my first chainsaw was like a home light and that was the lesson, that was the chainsaw that I learned the lesson on ethanol gas and not to put regular pump gas in your small engines. It'll just gunk it up and ruin it if you let the gas sit in there because they're not made for straight out of the pump gas. Cars and trucks are made to run pump gas. Small engines like leaf blowers, weed eaters, chainsaws, they need to have stable put in it or some sort of gas stabilizer that uh, prevents it from getting all gunked up if it sits in there. So that chainsaw got ruined. Uh, then I had a Husqvarna and it was a great saw and uh, I ended up selling it because I didn't need it anymore. I thought I wasn't going to use it anymore. Then we started homesteading and it was time to get a chainsaw. Um, if you heat with wood or you are cutting firewood, get a good chainsaw. The, this is the chainsaw I use now. This is a steel M5271 Farm Boss uh, and it's badass. Best saw, uh, in my opinion, that you can buy. Wood splitter, worth the expense. Real good question. This is something I'm trying to figure out myself. If you uh, heat primarily with wood, like a wood stove or a fireplace, and you have to cut and process a bunch of wood, you're going to be splitting a lot of wood. Wood splitters are super expensive. They can be up to $1,000, uh, uh, actually up to $3,000, depending on what kind you're getting. And uh, it will save you tons and tons of time and work as long as you're processing a lot of wood to offset that cost. So I think what I'm going to do is go in with uh, my buddy Clark and maybe one other friend who actually sells firewood. Uh, he has a splitter, but I don't know if it's his or not. So if we can go three ways, split the cost of that, and then just kind of have wood splitting parties every year, uh, I think that'll help offset the cost. And uh, yeah, so that's a judgment call. You got to split a heck of a lot of wood to make it worth it. But it'll definitely save your back. So that could be worth it in itself. Uh, should we invest in better sound equipment for our YouTube videos? Yes, absolutely 100%. If you are using uh, just your phone or a point and shoot camera or even a DSLR, if you're using the built in onboard microphone, generally it's bad. Uh, in your phone, that's like a two or three dollar microphone. If you have a DSLR, the onboard microphone is going to pick up all of the noise of the autofocus motor spinning the lens so all you're going to pick up in your footage is you don't want that. Um, spend the money, get you know, 100 bucks or whatever, get a Rode VideoMic Pro or VideoMic Me if you're using a, a cell phone. Shotgun mic, it's good for 10, 15, 20 feet even and it only picks up a small cone in front of what you're in front of what you're shooting so your subject you don't get all the ambient noise around you uh, now when you move farther away from your subject that's when you can look at adding a lav mic 
like a $20 lav mic and you can plug that right into your cell phone, hit record in the voice memo recorder, record all the audio on a separate track, sync it up in post, You've got way better audio than if you're 50 feet away and trying to pick it up with your shotgun mic. So those are two options. And then later you can add like a Sennheiser wireless transmitter receiver, record that remote audio directly onto your camera. But yes, number one, always invest in a quality microphone. Number two, invest in quality lighting. It doesn't have to be expensive lighting. It can be whatever you need to make your scene well lit. But those are things that will last you a lot longer than your camera. You're going to be replacing your camera every two, three years or however often, but you can then take your microphones and your lighting along with you and hopefully not have to replace that. So yes, invest in as good of audio as you can afford, as long as it's, just don't use what's on your camera. Let's see, Joanne, my question is for Jeremy, will you be installing any type of solar panel and batteries as a backup system? Not on this property, but Mm, we may have some things in the works, and if everything pans out, there will be definitely some serious solar projects happening in the next three to six months where we can do everything start to finish, specking the equipment uh, to a particular application, installing the equipment, going step by step, all that. Hopefully, next three to six months, but that's all I'm going to say about that right now. A uh, question from Josh. When Jeremy sharpened the butcher knife, what was the different colored blocks that he used on it? Oh, that's a diamond sharpening kit. So this is a diamond sharpening kit by DMT. It's got three, it comes in a little wooden box. It's got three different um, grits from, what is it, uh, coarse, medium, fine. Uh, the reason I got this was because you, it's embed, like supposedly diamond embedded and you don't need to use water or oil. And I, it, Definitely does not need water or oil. And I really just use this to redress a knife or a blade. Um, typically kitchen cutlery, I'm using a sharpening steel and a whetstone. And then after every five or six sharpenings, I'll redress it on these stones. And they have worked really well. Okay, question from Leslie Oliver. Have you considered showing a novice, females included, how to use power tools that could be really useful? You know, I never thought about this because I just, I just never thought about it, but it's an awesome, excellent idea. Uh, I realize that there are a lot of people who just don't know how to use tools or what tools to use for what or how to use them safely or, you know, anything about tools. Probably a good idea for a little video series on the basics of basic hand tools, basic power tools. So we'll do that. Uh, let's see. Question from America. 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 Love it. Uh, best way to disassemble a pallet. Uh, if you watched the video I did on uh, scavenging pallets for a goat shelter, that's where I, I tried to really figure that out. And the best way I found was using a reciprocating saw with a demolition blade, otherwise known as a sawzall. Zips right through the nails between the slats and the studs and allows you to make lumber quickly. Depends on what you're using for, but for typical use, yeah, you can zip through it with a reciprocating saw. You can use a you know you can use a pry bar and it does work if you're really trying to save the wood and then pound the nails out, but it takes like ten times longer because you're wasting a lot of time trying to not s split all the wood. Does it pay reclaiming pallets versus buying new wood? That's a great question. Uh, I would say if you have enough pallets to tear down all at once and. Uh, to give you enough lumber to build at least 75% of the project you're trying to do, then yes, it's worth it. And as long as you're getting the pallets for free. I mean, you can estimate what it's gonna cost you to use new materials for your project and then compare that to how much time it's gonna take you to tear down the equal amount of materials. This kind of goes back to that old three point rule. Do you want it done right, fast, or cheap? You can pick two. Uh, if you want it right and fast, it's not going to be cheap. If you want it cheap and fast, it's not going to be right. And if you want it fast and right, it's not going to be cheap. You know what I mean. Pick two. What is your top three need-to-have tools and top three power tools in a workshop? That's a pretty good question. And again, that depends on what it is you're trying to build. Um, if you're building things from wood, that may be different than if you're building things from metal or if you're crafting, I don't know. So typically I build things from wood, so that means you need to measure, cut, and fasten. So measuring tape, that would be number one. Uh, a saw, 
That would be number two. And maybe a hammer for nails. A simple old fashioned saw. Doesn't have any batteries or cords. Always works and it cuts two by fours really quick. Uh, and then you can add screwdriver, a set of screwdrivers and adjustable wrench clamps. I'm gonna do a video I think probably on just putting together a basic tool kit that everyone should have in their house uh, regardless. So, uh, and the second part was what three power tools in a workshop. That would be a circular saw, because they're very flexible. You can cut all your dimensional lumber with a circular saw and you can cut large panels like four by eight sheets of plywood if you have a little fence you add to it and you can rip it. Um, and that way you don't need a table saw. So very flexible, um, versatile electric saw. Uh, and a sander, I would use, I would say a sander is important. Um, again, depends on the kinds of projects you build. I build a lot of casework, cabinets, things like that. Gotta have a sander. Uh, and then a cordless drill screwdriver. Uh, so I have two of these that just will not die. So, I mean, I want to replace them, but they just won't die. But one I use to drill holes, the second one I use to drive the screws, and fast. So that's it. That's all the questions I have. That was a nice, quick, easy video. We are trying to stay caught up. Holy cow. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, like, subscribe. We will see you in tomorrow's video, and thank you for watching. Deadly lizards.